Hi, I'm, my name is John Walker. I'm the author of a, a novel called Push Process, which is published by Autech Press. Um, and that's a not, it's a, Push Process is a novel about a photographer, um, but it's also a photography book. Um, so it has a written narrative um, about a photographer who's discovering uh, Venice, uh, which is where the novel's set and where all the photographs were taken. Um, he's discovering photography. Uh, but it also has, uh, after the written narrative concludes, it has a long uh, photo essay, which is a, um, a long sequence of 48 images uh, which are presented uh, without any text. And I'm just going to present the opening of that long es photo essay um, in this video and um, try and explain uh, how it works as an essay, how it works as a sequence. So the images are all on the theme of Venice as a modern city, um, but um, the larger sequence is divided into several shorter chapters and it's punctuated throughout um, with images taken on Vaporettos or at Vaporetto stops. It's, uh, so the idea behind that is that it's as if the view is making their way around the city Intermittent, intermittently getting on and off the vaporettos, and if you, don't, if you don't know that word, the vaporettos are the, the public transport system of Venice, they are the boats that you get uh, use as buses. Um, so the photographs were all taken uh, about 20 years ago, um, they're all using black and white film, um, the narrative of the novel takes place in 2000, 2001, the photographs were actually taken um, a couple of years after that, but it's just it was easier to organise the fictional narrative by uh, setting it in 2000 and 2001. So, as I say, this sequence comes after the written narrative of the novel um, uh, ends. And the first chapter in this sequence is, um, I guess it's about looking, it's about spectacle, uh, it's about the commodification of spectacle, it's about the infrastructure and economics of spectacle. So the first image was taken on a Vaporetto um, uh, and Vaporettos, if you've been, ever been to Venice, you'll know that they're often uh, extremely uh, busy, extremely crammed with visitors. So this image, um, I think you can identify 12 uh, individual people here um, or you know fragments of people. Um, and they are all looking at something, um, but they're all looking in different directions. Um, and also you can't see what any of them are looking at. Um, so uh, I thought this was a good way to introduce the idea of looking, the idea of things being displayed for you. Yeah. So this uh, next image is of a temporary viewing platform. Um, which is set up on the Grand Canal, and it, in this case it's for the Regatta Storica, uh, which is a traditional boat race that takes place in early September. So I guess the idea here is that spectacle as commodity is as always it's as much about exclusion as it is about inclusion. So when you create privileged access, you by definition also exclude. Um, so here we have a viewing platform which is intended um, to help you see things, to make it more convenient for you to um, look at a spectacular entertainment. Um, but from another point of view, it's actually an obstruction to viewing, and that's how it's photographed here. Um, so the thing that facilitates viewing is also um, kind of almost by definition something that can, seen from another point of view, obstructs viewing. We're back at a Vaporetto stop here. Um, so during the period uh, when I used to visit Venice regularly to do research in the archive, um, you would find, um, you know, it was quite often to encounter, quite um, common to encounter little groups of musicians moving around the city. Um, they would always have an accordion player and they'd move around the city busking. So they stopped somewhere, um, often in front of a restaurant. 
and play a couple of popular tunes uh, while somebody, uh, one of the group, goes around uh, to collect money from diners or bystanders. And then they move on to the next promising spot. In other words, uh, you could say that they make a spectacle of themselves um, as the idiom goes. And usually this involves kind of um, very extrovert behaviour, um, you know, explicitly playing up to spectators, trying to catch people's eye. But here the accordion player um, has got his eyes closed. Um, I don't know, I can't quite remember the circumstances under which I taught this. I don't know if there was somebody collecting money that I deliberately cut out of the frame um, or whether the, um, the accordion player was actually on his own here, um, perhaps on his way home. The woman is obviously a Venetian, I think. Um, the combination of fur coat and plastic bag, um, to me, makes that obvious. Um, the accordion player is of no interest to her. Um, she's heard a solo mio, or whatever it is that he's playing, uh, a million times. But I am more puzzling. So what interests me here is the kind of um, triangulation of gazes. So I'm interested in both of them. She's only looking at me. He isn't looking at either of us, uh, but he wants us to look at him. Um, and there's also two other kind of um, layers here. There's uh, obviously somebody or perhaps more than one person standing behind me. So the guy reflected in the glass in the middle um, is obviously standing behind me and he's not looking at any of us. Um, and then the Vaporetto beyond the glass um, uh, at the docked at the Vaporetto stop um, is kind of existing in a reality of its own here as well. So it's natural to assume, um, if you come to Venice as a tourist, that the entire city is composed entirely of things arranged for your uh, visual delight. Um, designed specifically to be looked at uh, but like all cities Venice also has places where looking is actively discouraged um, so this is uh, one of two prisons um, in Venice or at least there were two prisons uh, 20 years ago um, so a prison is a place uh, where inmates are minutely subjected to surveillance and have no privacy and um, that's how prison operates. Uh, but I apparently am not allowed to photograph uh, the outside of that prison. Um, or so the prison guard is informing me uh, in no uncertain terms here. So this man, um, I would say, is uh, from the naval base Arsenale. If you spend any time in Venice, um, and if you're working in Venice, uh, if you have something that you need to be doing uh, with your time and your day, you have to adopt, you learn, you quickly learn, you have to adopt um, certain ruthless strategies to navigate the city. So to move through crowds of dawdling tourists, um, you have to um, give up on the idea of looking up, looking around you, you'd never pause you concentrate exclusively on the um, on the inches directly in front of you uh, because you're looking for potential gaps in the crowd otherwise you would take forever to get anywhere basically I'm um, and so I'm um, I'm kind of interested in the way that this guy is on the edge you know is becoming an individual um, and the way that other people behind him are individuated on the edge of the crowd um, and I guess this is how crowds this is of the nature of crowds that the further people away are from your viewing point the more they become an indistinguishable mass um, and the closer they are to you the more they become separated out as individuals so this is an, another image where there's a little um, you know, several of these images are, are featured in the narrative of the novel where they have a little essay uh, about the circumstances of, the, of their creation attached to them. Um, but I, I won't go into that too much um, here, uh, except to say um, in the context of the sequence, in the context of this chapter about spectacle and about uh, the, econo the economy and the infrastructure behind that, 
this is partly about the fact there are several different versions of the weight of a waiter here. Um, so the version on the right is um, you know I'm sitting directly in front of the waiter at the bar. The version on the right is a direct depiction of him, but it's kind of out of focus to the extent that he's just um, kind of an icon of the idea of a waiter. Yeah, he doesn't have uh, any individuality in that particular iteration of him. And the further we go away from him, the more of an individual he becomes, but the smaller he gets. So the version of them uh, in the middle is, is, um, is the, the reflection um, of the back of him. Uh, and then the smaller, very small version on the left is a reflection of a reflection. I um, explain this in a bit more detail in the narrative of the novel. Um, but he's a he's a tiny figure there, but he has a an individuality and a personality and a face um, there. The figure next to him in that um, small uh, detail on the left there is actually also a reflection. Um, it's somebody in fact, walking past the cafe uh, outside um, behind me uh, and looking through the window as they walk past. But again, that's explained a little bit more detail um, in the uh, narrative of the novel. We're back on our Vaporetto here and um, this image again is um, constructed using reflections and superimpositions, but it's about the idea that leisure requires is contained within someone else's work. Um, so our um, leisure as tourists, our relaxed contemplation of spectacle is dependent upon um, the labour of other people. So this is Real, the, Real, the bridge at the Rialto, which is one of the most famous landmarks in Venice and um, obviously one of the most photographed places in Venice. Um, it's usually depicted as um, from, the, you know, from its exterior as being um, a, a feature within the cityscape or it's used as a viewing platform from which to photograph the Grand Canal. It's rarely shown as what it also is um, and, or, and has been from the start. Um, that is an enclosed shopping arcade. Um, so its function as a spectacular landmark and its function as prime retail real estate are of course um, closely connected. There's a little essay within the novel on this image as well. Um, but what I'll mention here is um, how this image is concerned with the kind of annual cycle of spectacular entertainments in Venice. Um, so what I mean by that is you might, you, hopefully you'll be able to make out that there are fairy lights uh, suspended over the, um, the, the middle section of the bridge here. But they're, they're a little bit difficult to make out and the reason why they're a little bit difficult to make out is that they're turned off. And that is because this image was taken between Christmas and Carnival. So they're put up for Christmas when they're obviously turned on. Then they're turned on, turned off after Christmas but they're left up. Um, because they're going to be turned on again during Carnival. Um, so uh, this image is about that kind of um, cycle um, of different entertainments which are spread out throughout the year. So here we are back again uh, with the idea of privileged access and exclusion. So this image uh, shows the construction in progress of a sort of temporary makeshift cinema in Piazza San Marco, which was set up um, for the world premiere of Shark Tale um, during the film festival, the film Shark Tale. And this kind of um, parasitic encroachment upon San Marco um, of modern entertainments um, that want to borrow its kind of historical kudos, its historical gravitas uh, is pretty common. So there's a very uh, infamous example um, of, uh, there was a concert by Pink Floyd in Piazza San Marco in 1989 that left a tide of garbage behind. And one of the bars um, I used to go to had a photograph of the aftermath with, you know, written underneath it, never again, uh, which is a little detail that uh, crops up in the novel as well. 
uh, you know, it's a very well remembered example of, of what a catastrophe that um, concert was from the point of view of people who lived in Venice. But I'm also interested here in how the long exposure of this image erases the presence of the workmen putting these structures together. So again, it's about um, how um, there is a, you know, a spectacle is built from labour, which is often rendered invisible or relegated to the background. So the, the next image in the sequence is um, again back to a Vaporetto stop. This is um, the walkway out to the Vaporetto stop at Santa Maria del Giglio. The Vaporetto stop itself is just visible at the left edge here. Um, this is introducing a new chapter, a new theme uh, within the sequence, which is about um, restoration, it's about repair, it's about improvised or temporary structures. Uh, but I'm not going to uh, discuss that new chapter, I think I've talked for long enough. Um, however, if you found these images or this discussion of interest, I really hope you'll consider buying a copy of Push Process, which again is published by Autec Press. And again, it's not just um, a photo sequence, um, um, it's also a story about a photographer who's discovering Venice and falling in love.